Hello everyone, uh, this is Digital Dave and uh, today we're going to be talking about artifact photography. Uh, what you're looking at here is a basic tabletop uh, artifact photography camera station. It consists of a copy stand with a base, a LED light tablet, and you can see that that has a very even white light. We're going to be using that to drop the shadows out of the uh, background so we have a pure white background. Up in the corner here we have a studio light that we can control. It's actually on an articulating arm that allows us to raise, lower it, reposition it, and so on. Uh, we, over here we have a uh, uh, light paddles. These are LED light paddles. And let me just turn that on to show you. And they're on articulating arms. So you can position the arm anywhere you want to give you additional light to highlight specific areas, maybe to uh, fill in a shadow and so on. The other components is a sheet of plexiglass um, with felt tabs on the corners. That's going to sit on top of the light tablet so that we can slide it easily. Then we take an artifact and a little piece of white eraser. We want to elevate the artifact, get it away from the surface so we don't see any of the scratches on the plexiglass um, or dust particles or things like that. Every image that we take, we got to have a scale, or in this case, we're going to be using a metric scale, uh, and it needs to be placed right at the same level as the top of the artifact. So to accomplish that, we take a piece of clay, and we're going to use the clay to hold the scale in position. So that we take the scale and lightly lay it on the surface of the artifact to get the height, and then we jam it into the clay so it holds it right at the same level as the artifact. So once we turn the camera on and start the software you're going to be able to see this live in real time. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, and we'll be able to move the artifact with the plexiglass to position it and we'll be able to move the scale with this piece of uh, white foam board and the clay so that we can line the scale up perfectly. So let's uh, start up the software. So now I've started the software. This is called EOS Utility, and it's software that comes with Canon digital cameras. There's two components to it. There's the live view screen, which is this big screen right here, which is actually a live feed of what the camera's, camera lens is seeing. Right now you can see the artifact is blurry. It also has these vertical and horizontal grid lines and these are used, these don't appear in the, in the final image, they are there to help you line things up. Um, it has a uh, control panel which has uh, aperture settings and exposure and you saw when I turned that on it automatically focused. Uh, there's two methods for focusing, there's the autofocus uh, control where when you hit the shutter it automatically focuses. There's also the, if you double click the center rectangle or the center square, you get a green box that tells you that it focused. If this rectangle isn't over top of the artifact, if it's over here in the corner or something, and I double click, it, it tries to find something to focus on. And if it can't find, you get a red box if you can't find anything. So even though it's a blurry blob, we know that's our artifact, we're going to put that over top and double click. You can see the focus is very quick. It works off of contrast and it needs to see something to focus on it. So what we're going to do now is come in and um, fill the frame better. So we're going to move the camera down lower to make the object or the artifact appear larger on the screen. So we loosen the knob on the, on the column. We bring the camera down until we get it to about the size we want. So I just went all the way down here. And you could see that I'll have to refocus. So I'm going to put this rectangle right on the center of the artifact, double click, and immediately it's in focus. So the other thing is we want to make sure that the scale itself is lined up with the left edge of the artifact, which I think it's really close. But you could see if I slide this over and touch so that the artifact is touching up here, this grid line, then I want the zero mark of the scale to be on that same grid line. So I'm going to move the scale independently over so that it's touching or close to it. There we go. And then I can recenter and crop out 
we don't want to show these bars you don't need to you just want to show the word metric and the numbers and all I'm doing now is just kind of fine-tuning it trying to get it to set settle down where I want it there we go so at this point we've done composition and uh, the next thing to do would be to take a test picture so I'm going to click the shutter up here and that image automatically goes into because it's been preset uh, this camera images folder and it's the last one I'm going to open that up and so that's the picture we just captured and we can zoom in and we can look at some really fine detail you can see throughout the image that there's some really good detail and pure white background no shadows we'll go back to full screen so all we did was composition and focus all right, so we may want to adjust our exposure slightly. Right now, it doesn't look bad at all. I'm going to close this and close this. But if, say I want to make it darker. If I want to make it darker or lighter, I'm going to use this, what's called the exposure compensation bar. And right now, it's under the plus two. So if I go in the plus direction, up, you know, plus three, plus four, it gets brighter. If I go in the minus direction, minus one, zero, it gets darker. So let's say I want to make it one exposure brighter. I'm going to click this arrow and take another picture. It's a very subtle change. And then review it. So that's one exposure lighter. And that's where we started. And I actually like where we started better than the lighter one. The object is to make the artifact photograph appear just like the artifact itself. So you don't want to make it darker or lighter because you think it looks better. You want it to be an accurate representation of the artifact. The other thing we could do is uh, if we want to fill in some of these shadows, maybe it's a little dark on the right side, we could use a white piece of foam board. You can see I just have this little white piece of foam board that I put in place and it's bouncing the light back into the right side of the artifact and it's kind of filling in some of those shadows so let's shoot that one at the dot next to the plus two and then let's go back one to the plus two and shoot another so we just got two more shots to look at let's make these thumbnails so here is uh, the shot with the uh, brighter exposure and the reflector in place and then the last one is a darker exposure with the reflector in place. And the reflectors eliminated the really dark black shadows but maintained the shadows on the surface to give us good surface detail. So that's a good picture. From that point on you would take that whatever image you like the best and move it into a, a folder of your choice and rename it with whatever naming configuration you would use and then delete the test shots and move on. So let's do that. Let's move on to a different type of artifact, maybe a larger one. So let's get all this taken off and we'll move on to a different type of artifact. 